let's get started. Today is the last lecture by Hiroshi. Okay, uh, thank you. So I just realized that uh, I went through just about half of my lecture notes. So uh, uh, we'll select some material from the lecture, uh, rest of the lecture note. And uh, uh, one thing I want to remind you is that in the last lecture, uh, I argued that uh, this eternal black hole in antiliter space uh, is dual to thermal field double state in the tensor product uh, of conformal field theory Hilbert space. This was uh, proposed by Marat uh, in 2001. And, uh, uh, but then you, I would also like to, you to remember the uh, causal wedge reconstruction or ADS Rindler wedge reconstruction that uh, we discussed uh, earlier uh, yesterday, which is to say that if you have just one boundary and then if you have a causal domain on the boundary of some region A, so you have this causal domain A in CFT, so, so suppose A is some part of the space-like section of conformal field theory, you can draw causal domain, the domain of dependence, please excuse me, associated to this A and denote it D of A. So this is on the boundary of ADS. And suppose this is that causal domain. So now I, I make this into one dimension. So, and then there is a, 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 a causal future and the past. So this is a union of, uh, sorry, intersection of future and the past of this causal domain. And what I was uh, discussing based on HKLL construction is that if you use Hilbert space on this segment of conformal field theory, you can reconstruct everything inside of it as far as local operators are concerned. If you apply this philosophy here, what this is telling you is that if you utilize conformal field theory on this side, you can reconstruct everything on this wedge outside of the black hole. On, this, on the other hand, if you use the conformal field theory on this side, you can reconstruct information on this side. So this suggests the following, that this side does not know over here. So if you trace out over here for the sum of your double state, then you have a density matrix finite temperature density matrix for, so this is a thermal density matrix, for the conformal field theory one. So this reconstruction suggests that uh, this knows about uh, this region one. On the other hand, if you trace out the other uh, uh, Hilbert, uh, Hilbert space of the, the other conformal field theory, this side, then you'd be reconstructing this. Beg your pardon? I, I, I denote this to be one and this will be two. It's a matter of notation. Okay? Uh, okay, so this, is, this, is, this will be a reconstruction. And this picture fits very well on uh, what's happening on this side and what's happening on this side. Because on this side, you just have a tensor product of conformal field theory. There is no direct interaction between them. You're just selecting the entangled state. This is reflected on the fact that uh, there is no communication between this region and this region. That uh, these are space-like separated, so there are no communications between them. Nevertheless, they are entangled. Since they are, there is no communication between them, so that means that whatever you do on this side cannot influence events on this side, and vice versa. So that is related to the fact that there are no interaction between these conformal field theory. So whatever you do in this conformal field theory cannot influence this. However, if you make a measurement, observation of this state, the outcome of the observation can influence the outcome of observation in the other conformal field theory. And this is reflected on the fact that you can jump into the black hole from this side, and you can jump into the black hole on this side, and you can meet over here. So the, the, the fact that in addition to these regions associated to this conformal field theory, specifically for left side and right side, you have two additional regions where you can meet. It's related to the fact that these states, even though there are no direct interaction between them, are nevertheless entangled. Okay? So now, uh, in fact, let's discuss the nature of entanglement. 
So uh, if you compute, let's compute the entanglement entropy, uh, starting with partial trace over Hilbert space for the second conformal field theory. So thermal field double, tensor thermal field double. Okay, so this is, so then of course by definition you get back to this. So our entangled density matrix, entanglement density matrix is this. So therefore if you compute the entanglement entropy for the region one, for this sum of field double state, then this is trace over Hilbert space one of rho i log of rho i. And uh, so if you calculate it, you can, you can compute it and then say find that this is actually expectation value of uh, Hamiltonian for at this finite temperature minus the log of uh, the free uh, the partition function, finite temperature partition function. But this is nothing but the entropy, thermal en entropy of this canonical ensemble. And uh, it's given by the Bekenstein Hawking formula, which is 4G times uh, 2 pi d over 2, gamma d over 2, times r d minus 1, where r is the radius of the horizon of the black hole. And uh, this is basically the area of the horizon. For the black hole are uh, in d plus 1 dimension. The, the, for d plus 1 dimensional space time, the black hole horizon is d minus 1 dimension. And uh, if you, the black hole has a radi uh, horizon has a radius r, then this is the area divided by four times g newton is reproduced uh, in the large energy limit. Gamma function. That's a, that's a, so because, well, it's a, it's a, this, is a, this is a volume of the unit sphere in d minus one dimensions, right? Uh, now, let's, let, this, is, this, this is also, this has also the following interpretation. Uh, as I pointed out uh, yesterday, between region one and region two, even though they are not causally related, but they are geometrically connected. Namely, that if you take space-like section like that, where they are connected, and the geometry looks like this. So this is the geometry of this space-like section. So, so I'm suppressing the time direction. This is a space-like section, where you have SD minus one on this side, and then goes here, and then this asymptote to hyperbolic space on both sides. This, this goes to CFT2, this goes to CFT1. And then this geometry is called the Einstein Rosen bridge. Okay? So the radius, so, so there is a, this actually uh, have this, uh, pic, pic, this picture, uh, show, the, the, I draw this picture in, su in such a way that you can see that there is actually minimum area region over here. And the radius R is this radius R, which is related to the inverse temperature beta by this relation. D is a space-time dimension for the conformal field theory. Like that, okay? So, uh, so that means that uh, this also have an interpretation. The entanglement entropy for the conformal field theory one has also an interpretation that it is 4G Newton is dividing the area of the minimum surface separating CFT1 and CFT2. You can interpret the same thing in this way. So namely that these two conformal field theories are spatially separated, and, you, you, and then the, the, this is drawn here like a point because I projected it in two dimensions, but this is actually d minus one dimensional sphere, and uh, the area of this sphere is actually related to the entanglement entropy between them. Okay, so now this has a very interesting features, namely that uh, the, the area of this uh, uh, black hole, uh, the area of this uh, 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 Einstein-Rosen bridge 
is exactly proportional to the entanglement. You can also see that from here, too, because as area grows, the, uh, the, uh, the area becomes small, beta becomes small. So that means that, uh, uh, so sorry, as area becomes small, uh, there is something wrong with this picture. Uh, is this T? I must have made a mistake. Because te as temperature grows, uh, the, the beta should grow, uh, the, the, temp uh, the R should grow, I believe. So, so sorry? Temperature, yeah, so this is consistent. Yeah, okay, good, good. So, D times R squared, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so excuse me, yeah, anyway, so, so, uh, so as R grows, the uh, entanglement grows. And as, as R becomes small, the entanglement becomes small. So, uh, so this is related to the fact that, as I said, even though these two, spe two, two conformal field theories cannot influence each other directly because there are no direct interaction between them. But nevertheless, they are connected by entanglement, which is reflected on the fact that they are connected in this case by the space like the size of the space like section separating them. Okay? So this observation is very interesting that somehow so it, it, tells, it, it is interesting for two reasons. One is that uh, the entanglement itself is influencing the geometry. That somehow as the entanglement grows, the size of the bridge grows. And uh, so therefore the geometry connecting the two conformal field series growing. So somehow entanglement is building up the geometry in the bulk. And the other interesting feature is that this entanglement entropy is related to the area separating the two things. So now, so this motivated uh, Shinsei Ryu and Tadashi Takayanagi to propose more general formula for uh, entanglement. Uh, of the uh, of a given state. So let me uh, first remind you a uh, general uh, 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 causal wedge reconstruction or ADS Lindra reconstruction that I, I already uh, reminded you over here, but uh, let me just state it in the following way. So I told you that if you have uh, uh, some region A and then you have a, a domain of dependence A, then you can reconstruct the intersex intersection of the past and future of this domain. So, but I should also uh, mention that, uh, well, suppose you have a pure state. Suppose you have a one of these pure states. This certainly is a pure state in this di direct product. This is a pure state in the direct product conformal field theory. So similarly, suppose you have just single ADS space, and then suppose you have some pure state. In this case, if you have some region A, then uh, you have this uh, uh, causal domain associated to A. And then you have a complement A bar. And then there is a, a causal past and future, intersection of causal past and future associated to it. So this is this region. So if I draw it this side on this side, then you have a, a causal a, a domain of dependence for D of A bar. And then they cover this side. So for the uh, space-like section, say t equals zero. Suppose this is t equal, the picture t equals zero. Then the entire uh, bulk geometry, this is uh, any pure state in the code subspace, which is describable by smooth geometry. Doesn't have to be ADS, some smooth geometric solution. Uh, for the gravitational theory, then this is again divided into two regions. So, so, if you, so even though this is a, a single geometry, but naturally divided into two domains, separated by the fact that you have this causal patch on, the, on this side and you have causal related region on the other side. So this suggests, well, if you compare these uh, two pictures, this suggests that just like the, uh, the size of the Einstein-Rosen bridge connecting the two causally disconnected but entangled region, 
uh, gives you the uh, uh, entanglement entropy, it is natural to expect that uh, the area of this gives you the uh, entanglement. So this led uh, Ryu and Takayanagi to propose that uh, uh, for, for this kind of pure state, uh, the uh, entanglement uh, entropy is given by the area of, uh, of this surface, let me call sigma, associated to A. And uh, this has uh, 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 various features. The sigma of A should end on the boundary, should be anchored by the boundary of A, and uh, uh, it, should be, it should extrematize with respect to the metric in the bulk. And uh, this has been uh, checked in various examples. This proposal has been checked. For example, uh, I mentioned in CFT2, we have this formula by Cardi and Calabrese, Calabrese and Cardi, that I mentioned uh, the other day, uh, where if you have, uh, 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 so it's one plus one dimensional conformal field theory, so if you consider boundary with length L, then uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, conformal, uh, sorry, uh, the entanglement entropy is given by this plus constant. So this is what uh, I mentioned the other day. And you can show that uh, if you consider uh, a pure ADS, so this is for the vacuum state. So if you consider pure ADS3, and if you consider a minimum surface uh, ending for the region with uh, length L, then uh, and they evaluate the area and uh, divide by 4G Newton and translate that into conformal field theory language. This is exactly reproduced. This is a hyperbolic space, so the metric actually diverges near the boundary, so you have to introduce some regularization, which is related to the fact that on this side, you also have to introduce ultraviolet regularization, which affects this constant piece. So the, the, this ambiguity also matches up in that sense. Okay? So, uh, but this, this leads us to uh, 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 new kind of idea called the entanglement wedge. Which is a, a slightly different notion compared to the causal wedge that we have been talking about. So, so I have defined in a couple of lectures ago the notion of a causal wedge, which is that if you take the region A, so, so I draw it over here, if you t take the space-like sub subspace of the space-like section of a conformal field theory, you can define domain of dependence, and then you can consider past and future of that domain of dependence, consider youth intersection, then you have a causal uh, wedge uh, associated to uh, uh, region A. You can also define entanglement wedge associated to this region, which is naturally related to the Ryu Takayanagi surface. Uh, in, in some cases, causal wedge and the entanglement wedge are closely related, but in other cases, they are not necessarily related. And in fact, uh, generally speaking, entanglement wedge is bigger than causal wedge. So I have to first define what the entanglement wedge means. The entanglement wedge uh, is the following uh, notion. So, so you have, a, suppose you have a state uh, which asymptote to the uh, anti space towards the boundary. So you have some uh, solution to gravitational equation satisfying the ADS boundary condition. And uh, consider some space-like section of this. And then again, as usual, I consider some section, some space-like section A, for example. So then uh, you can consider a Ryu Takayanagi surface associated to it, which I denoted by sigma of A. So then you have uh, some region surrounded uh, by A and uh, the Ryu Takayanagi surface. So let me denote this by this uh, character small a. And then entanglement wedge is defined as a domain of dependence, not of big A, but small a. So entanglement domain is uh, entanglement wedge is a, is a region where in the bulk. So let me, 
So I cannot draw it here, so let me draw it uh, on this, in this diagram. So suppose this is small a. So I suppress this uh, uh, dimension along the boundary. So suppose this is small a, then, then what you do is uh, just like before, you consider the past and the future of this a, and then consider intersection of this. So this is the uh, entanglement wedge. Uh, well, uh, no, I didn't speak it correctly. So what, so that, that, so, so what I meant by uh, the causal, uh, the, the domain of dependence is that uh, uh, you pick a point A, a point in, uh, so, so, so this, this, this region is defined in such a way that if you pick any point inside of this and then extend this point along any time-like path, it would have to necessarily intersect to this small A. So that's the def definition of the uh, domain of dependence. So for example, if you pick a point here, you can extend this indefinitely in past and future in time-like direction without intersecting small a. So, so you see that this point is outside of this domain of dependence, whereas this point is inside of this domain of dependence. So this is the definition. So this is the entangle, entangle, entanglement wedge. And you can actually show that entanglement wedge in general is uh, bigger than the causal wedge. So for example, so, so this can be most easily be seen uh, when you consider uh, the case uh, where the, uh, 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 the boundary region A has multiple components. You can certainly consider the case when the A has a multiple component the, 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 you cannot you don't, uh, uh, the, all these definition does not prevent you from doing that. So suppose you consider a case when you have, a, uh, uh, you have the region A has multiple component. So, so suppose uh, the region A is a union of these fellows. Okay. So, and then here I'm just considering the, uh, the, the space-like section of these wedges, okay? So, uh, so if you have a situation like that, the Ryu Takayanagi surface would go like that. The definition of Ryu Takayanagi surface is that it's a minimum surface connecting the boundary of the region. But here you have four, uh, two regions, so you have four boundaries. So well, in, in this particular case, uh, in, in, when the boundary is one dimensional, but you can, cons in more general case, you have two boundaries. These are connected. Uh, but suppose A is a be slightly bigger. So suppose A is slightly bigger, and uh, suppose A goes like this, and then goes like this. So this is uh, one segment of A, one segment of A, and this is the other segment of A. So in this case, in this case, uh, if you are interested in Ryu Takayanagi surface, you would be choosing this type of uh, 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 boundary. So then, from this definition uh, of causal wedge, uh, entanglement wedge, entanglement wedge would choose this. Whereas uh, for the same configuration, the causal wedge will be smaller because causal wedge will have to actually, if you follow the definition of a causal wedge, it will have to choose the other region like that. And this is, the, so this is a causal wedge. So, so if you over, if you if you I draw it, uh, draw, if I draw it over here, it's going to overlap this region. But then these regions in the middle are not causally connected to either of these. So if you consider domain of dependence of A here and A here, and if you pick a point here, this point is spatially separated from these points. So you cannot send a, a signal from here to the causal uh, domain, domain of dependence of A here. So, so this point is not included in the causal wedge. Causal wedge would be like that. On the other hand, this should be properly regarded as entanglement wedge from this definition. Okay. Yes, sir. 
They, 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 so they overlap. Yes, well, this is included in here. Yeah, well, if this is bigger, then they could overlap. But for example, you, may, you, can, you can actually come up with a situation where they don't touch with each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so there is one more condition I, I should have mentioned, which is that uh, the surface has to be homologous to, to A. So this is a case when, so in pure state, often you don't have to worry about it. But when you have a black hole, for example, then you have a horizon. So, 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 this is, so I, should, I should mention that in, in Ryu Takayanagi formula, there is a condition I have time, so, so I have about 40 minutes left, I guess. Uh, so in Rita Kayanagi formula, uh, we have a, a, a condition called the homology con con constraint. That is that uh, the Rita Kayanagi surface has to be homologous to the boundary domain A. So suppose you have a black hole and you have a horizon. So if A is small, well, you can choose like this. So then uh, uh, this uh, would be uh, homologous to A. But suppose A becomes bigger. And then suppose A covers this region. Then you can have two types of minimum surfaces. You can have a minimum surface which goes like that. Or you can have minimum surface which actually goes like this. So you have these two possibilities. So, so it turns out that the homology constraint requires this condition. And in fact, this gives you the correct result. Because uh, you, what you can see is that uh, as, as this becomes bigger and bigger, eventually the, what minimum surface chooses is that uh, uh, this would grow. So then this is going to pinch off and then it's going to go become like that. So, so this will be the, uh, so this combination of this cycle and this cycle is still homologous to this boundary A. And eventually this disappears. So that means that if, when A covers the entire boundary A, then the Ryu Takayanagi surface in this case will be the horizon itself. And that's the correct answer because the entanglement entropy for the entire region is a Bekenstein Hawking entropy, as we calculated over here. And uh, so this gives rise to the correct answer. And in fact, uh, you, for the, you, can, for, you can also see that from this type of picture, that uh, when A is small, then it goes like that. But then when A grows, you start growing toward the boundary. And then as A wraps the entire space, you, you need to seek out the minimum surface, which is homologous to this. And minimum surface homologous to the boundary is uh, this neck of the, Bekenstein, uh, the uh, einstein rosen bridge. So, so this, this, this fits with this kind of picture here. OK? So, but the, the fact that uh, uh, so this, this existence of uh, uh, this entanglement which suggests that the reconstruction idea can also be possibly generalized to the domain bigger than the causal domain. You can ask, well, can you actually reconstruct in a state in entanglement wedge rather than the causal wedge? So in the remaining half an hour, uh, I would like to actually give uh, an argument that uh, you can actually reconstruct local operator in principle in this larger space of entanglement wedge rather than the causal wedge. But in order to do that, I have to tell you a little bit about the various uh, entropy inequalities uh, that you can discuss, derive uh, for uh, entanglement entropy. And fortunately, I know that last week, uh, Nima al Kani Hamed uh, discussed uh, uh, entropy inequality, in particular, the strong subadditivity and uh, he, as I watched his video, uh, he was deriving that from uh, the, po uh, the positivity and the monotonicity of relative entropy 
Do you remember that? Excellent. So, so, so I don't have to go through the derivation of this, and, uh, uh, but I will be utilizing that. OK, so entropy inequalities. So, so I think that uh, uh, Nima was talking about the strong subadditivity. And if you remember my first lecture, then strong subadditivity was re closely related, is, clo is related to the property of mutual information. So this is a mutual information. So mutual information is a, 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 a information quantity that tells you that how much you learn about A when you learn about B, right? Or no, more, more precisely, how much uncertainty about A is reduced by learning about B. So that's a mutual information. And gaining information should also always give you non-negative amount of information for the other quantity. So that means that this has to be positive or non-negative. And that is, uh, uh, that is actually called uh, sub-additivity. And the other uh, condition is that if you learn something more, then you'll be less uncertain. That would be the sort of slogan. And uh, so this can be summarized in this type of formula. And then this is actually strong sub-additivity. And then immediate, uh, almost a, uh, just a year after Ryu and Takayanagi proposed that formula, it was pointed out by uh, Matt Hendrick and Takayanagi that the uh, Ryu Takayanagi formula actually satisfies this strong subadditivity. So that was sort of a very nice confirmation of uh, 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 consistency of the Ryu Takayanagi proposal. And uh, as Nima was showing, that deriving this in general quantum system is very hard. But uh, deriving this uh, for a Ryu Takayanagi surface is actually relatively simple. So let me just uh, explain that in one line. So suppose you have a region A, B, C, and suppose these are entanglement entropy for A, B, C, et cetera. So then Ryu and Takayanagi says, so, 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 so what strong subadditivity says? Strong subadditivity says that SAB plus S uh, uh, BC is greater than or equal to SB plus SABC. Okay, so let me draw these four terms pictorially here. So SAB will be Ryu Takayanagi surface like this. So namely the area of this surface divided by four Newton. SBC will be this. So this will be the right-hand side. In contrast, the left-hand side, excuse me. In contrast, the right-hand side here is SB, which is this, and SAB, which is this. Do you see that sum of red curves is less than, so sum of the lengths of the less, uh, red curve in reds uh, is smaller than the sum of the white curves? And can you see why? Well, it is easy to see because uh, this red curve here, connecting a uh, boundary of B, is homologous to the one here. So, so evidently, this is longer than this because of the triangle inequality, or the fact that uh, this is actually stuck at the intersection here, so this gives you additional constraint. So this is actually the minimum surface. And this is a surface with one additional constraint, so this should be, in general, bigger. So, so reducing this over here should reduce the area. Similarly, moving this up over here should reduce the area. So that means that this, is, this sum of this should be less than this one. So this is a very simple derivation of uh, strong subadditivity, which was actually more generally difficult to derive uh, in the general circumstance. So this, the so Ryu Takayanagi formula is supposed to be applicable for, uh, actually, I, forgot, I, I should have mentioned it. So this formula was originally proposed for uh, a static state, a more generally a state 
which is time symmetric under reflection along the space like surface. And then subsequently, uh, uh, Hubne, Rangamani, and Takayanagi proposed more general formula for time dependent case, and those are called HRT formula. So you can ask, well, does, is this is strong subadditivity true for uh, uh, HRT formula? And uh, so for Ryu Takayanagi formula, therefore, so this for Ryu Takayanagi formula, strong subadditivity can be uh, uh, proven in this way. Right? Uh, but for more general HRT formula, actually, uh, the, uh, the, the same kind of argument works, uh, provided that the space time satisfies the, some null uh, uh, positive, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the null curvature condition, which is to say that uh, for any k, which is null, that means that k square is zero. Uh, this has to be non-negative. So if you, if you think that uh, uh, R, the geometry satisfies Einstein equation with cosmological constant with matter-energy momentum tensor, then the matter-energy mo momentum tensor should satisfy the null, null positivity uh, condition. Uh, null energy condition, excuse me. So if that is satisfied, then uh, you can actually derive strong subadditivity condition. This was uh, shown by Alan Wall. One, two, one, one, three, four, nine, four. So this is entropy, in, uh, this is a, a strong subadditivity condition. And you can ask, uh, are there any other inequality you can derive uh, for uh, Ryu Takayanagi formula? And in fact, understanding uh, yeah, ent entropy inequality in general is a very interesting question. Uh, it is known that for general Shannon entropy, that is a classical entropy that I talked at the very beginning of my first lecture, uh, it has been proven that there are infinitely many uh, independent uh, in entropy inequality for uh, general number of regions. And it was actually very recently proven, just 10 years ago. So even though this is a statement about classical Shannon entropy, but it was just proven 2007 by Matas that uh, there are infinitely many uh, in, uh, 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 entropy inequality for Shannon entropy. For, for Neumann entropy, for general quantum system, uh, it's not known. Although there are numerical evidences suggesting that uh, these, these are also infinite. Now, uh, recently, uh, uh, Nimbao, uh, Sefa Nezami, Bogdan Stoika, uh, and James, James Sully, and uh, uh, Michael Walter and myself uh, proved that uh, for Ryu Takayanagi surface, actually uh, entropy inequality is a finite. The independent entropy inequality is a finite and uh, 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 can be classified by finite algorithm for uh, every given number of domains. And uh, we were able to actually classify uh, uh, entropy inequality for small number of regions uh, explicitly uh, so, and enumerate them. So, so I, I actually was planning to talk a little bit about that, but uh, in view of time, uh, I will uh, skip uh, uh, this subject. But I just wanted to mention that uh, the, uh, the totality of entropy inequality satisfied by Ryu Takayanagi formula is in principle knowable, and there is a finite algorithm to classify them. And in fact, uh, there are uh, inequality generalizing uh, this type of strong subadditivity uh, inequality for more number of regions. And uh, those have uh, various interesting uh, interpretation and uh, are characterizing uh, entanglement property of a kind of state which belongs to the cold subspace. That is uh, the kind of state which can be described by geometry, uh, smooth geometry in the bulk. But uh, given the time, uh, I would like to move on to another entropy inequality, which, uh, as pointed out by uh, Nima, is closely related to strong subadditivity, which is an uh, inequality involving relative entropy.
So this is actually a very important notion in information theory, and uh, uh, its significance has been sort of motivated in Nima's uh, lecture, so I don't have to go through that. But let me just remind you that uh, ent uh, relative entropy is defined for given two density matrices. Relative entropy is a quantity which somehow tells you how close these two are. So some, it's like a distance, except that it's not quite symmetric in rho and sigma. So uh, relative entropy is defined as trace of uh, rho log rho minus trace of rho log sigma. So this is the relative entropy. And it has various important properties. I think that one of the fundamental property is that uh, this is actually non-negative and is equal to zero if and only if rho is equal to sigma. So this is actually a very important fact that uh, if relative entropy vanishes, then that means that the two density matrices has to be identical. I'm going to use that, so please remember this. And uh, another useful thing is that for quantum field theory, the uh, uh, entanglement entropy requires UV regularization, whereas in this combination, they are canceled. So it's actually a UV finite quantity, so it's more mathematically well-defined. And uh, it has various uh, uh, inequality. This is one of the inequality. Another inequality is that uh, if the region A contains region B, then the relative entropy between the uh, entanglement density matrices associated to rho A and rho B also uh, uh, increases. So this is known as monotonicity of uh, uh, relative entropy. Okay, now uh, we can calculate uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 relative entropy uh, for holographic cases. And for example, you can consider the following uh, object. So suppose, uh, so suppose let's say uh, sigma is a grand state. And then uh, rho uh, is uh, some excited state uh, is in, is, but still in the cold subspace in the way that I defined. So uh, the nice thing about the ground state is that uh, if I choose uh, A to be border-like region, So, uh, so you have a, 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 a d minus one dimensional boundary, which is a sphere. And then on the sphere, you can have a, 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 a d minus one dimensional ball. So if I choose A as a ball-like region, then I can actually uh, find an explicit expression for log of sigma A. So minus of log of sigma A is called modular Hamiltonian. And uh, in particular, when A is like ball-like, which is uh, whose boundary is a D minus two dimensional sphere, then explicit form of HA is known. It's actually one of the conformal generator of the boundary. And uh, the way you construct it is first that you can, by using conformal transformation, you can always map this region into hemisphere by rescaling it. And if you have a hemisphere where pictorially uh, it's half of the space, so this, suppose this is a space-like section of conformal field theory, it's a half of the space. Then there is a Rindler Hamiltonian, which is actually a boost Hamiltonian associated to this half of the space, which, for which this is a fixed point. So this is exactly the conformal transformation which fixes the boundary. And uh, that, so, so then you, 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 you do the conformal uh, transformation of this generator back into this region, and this gives you the modular Hamiltonian. So, so with this, therefore, 
what this is showing is that, therefore, this S of rho sigma in this case is given by, so suppose this is region A. Then this gives you, this first term is minus of Ryu Takayanagi formula, the Ryu Takayanagi entropy. So this is entanglement entropy, entanglement entropy for this uh, for the state A, rho of A. So this is entropy for rho of A. And the second term is just an expectation value of minus of rho of sigma for rho. So namely that this is an expectation value of the modular Hamiltonian evaluated for rho. So this looks like a free energy. This looks like a free energy, right? The Hamiltonian minus an entropy. So this looks like a free energy. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, this is actually a very useful analogy. So you can think of uh, uh, relative entropy as free energy for the modular Hamiltonian. Now, uh, as I said, uh, relative entropy is non-negative and vanishes when they coincide. So that means that uh, uh, by continuity, if you actually consider a small variation of, of, of rho around sigma, so suppose you consider infinitesimal variations like that, then relative entropy between them well, when, when del rho vanishes, it should vanish. But then, actually, the rho van this vanishes if and only if the rho is zero. So that means that actually it should start quadratically in the rho by continuity, because, uh, uh, because this is positive, not negative, and vanishes if and only if the rho is zero. So it should be quadratic. It should, cannot be linear, because if it is linear, then it should be negative on one side or the other. So it should be quadratic. So it should, be some, it should have some kind of quadratic expression plus some higher order, right? And uh, in fact, uh, in quantum information theory, this is known as uh, quantum uh, Fisher information. The Fisher information is sort of natural notion of metric in the space of probability distribution. And the in the quantum version, this is a metric in the space of density matrices. So this is known as uh, Fisher information. So this starts with a, a, a quadratic part. So that means that, uh, of course, this is zero. This will be zero in the linear order. In order the row, right? And uh, uh, it was shown by uh, various people. Uh, uh, I, I have reference here, but I guess uh, uh, you have started citing them, it gets complicated. That uh, it was shown that if you take sigma to be pure ADS geometry, and if you consider rho to be infinitesimal fluctuation about that geometry, then this is actually equivalent to linearized Einstein equation. in that case. So namely, if you characterize rho, state rho, as some fluctuation of the geometry around the pure ADS, this gives rise to actually constraint on the geometry that it has to subject to the Einstein equation. So it's very interesting that uh, uh, you can actually derive, in some sense, Einstein equation uh, from uh, uh, this type of information theoretical consideration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a non-local thing, but in this kind of linearized situation, it reduced to a local equation because uh, fluctuation at different points can be treated separately. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh, subsequently, uh, Nima Rashkeri and uh, Jennifer Lin, Bogdan Stoika, 
and uh, uh, Mark Van Rang, Funk, and myself, for example, have shown that uh, uh, we are interested in extending this to higher order in the fluctuation. And uh, we, we, show that act we are able to show that actually, in general, the notion of positivity here uh, is related to positivity of certain kind of energy associated to the entanglement wedge. But again, I only have like uh, 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 10 minutes, so, so I, I'm not able to go into that. But I do want to mention one more thing, which is sort of uh, one of the main things that I wanted to convey, which is that this type of entanglement, entropy inequality and equality actually uh, give you some conceptual reason of wh why this uh, reconstruction of bulk works. So let me try to end this lecture by uh, explaining the basic idea. So again, the, the idea comes from this, uh, uh, the, uh, this relation. By the way, this is known as the first law of uh, entanglement. In analogy with the first law of uh, thermodynamics. Okay, so now let me, let me actually uh, try to explain why this is related to the entanglement wedge reconstruction concept. So, uh, so first of all, uh, cons again, consider this situation where you have this region A, and then you have Ryu Takayanagi surface associated to A, and then you have this bulk region, which I denote by small a. So, uh, so if I compute, so suppose rho is some state in the code subspace, and then consider uh, our entanglement density matrix associated to that, and uh, uh, so it is computed by uh, CFT Hilbert space restricted to the region A of rho A log of rho A. Okay, and uh, uh, this is given by one over four G Newton times area of uh, sigma A minus, and it was shown by uh, Faulkner, Lukovitz, Maldacena, Faulkner, Lukovitz, Maldacena in one three zero seven two eight nine two that uh, the correction can be regard to this can be regarded as entanglement entropy calculated for the bulk quantum field theory. So the leading time, leading part, if you expand it in sort of Einstein gravity with small fluctuation by loop expansion, the leading term is a classical piece, which is given by this Ryu Takayanagi formula. But then there are corrections. And they pointed out that the correction can be calculated by thinking that where well, you have, uh, in the bulk, you have quantum field theory in the, in the small fluctuation. So then you can divide the Hilbert space of that quantum field theory into region small a and its complement. And then you can consider entanglement density matrix for that quantum field theory and compute the entanglement entropy. This is actually order one as opposed to uh, classical. This is order h bar, if you like. So order H bar correction can be calculated as uh, entanglement uh, 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 entropy in the bulk. Okay, now, but this is a classical piece, and then this is a quantum piece. And in some sense, you can think of this as the expectation value of some operator, because this is something that you can compute for given geometry. So, so you can think, you can imagine that there is actually an operator Both are UV, this is UV divergent and this is UV divergent. There is a, there is a uh, order H bar UV divergence also possibly contained in here. So you can imagine that there is an operator in the quantum theory of gravity which, whose expectation value gives you, for rho A, gives you area of sigma A. 
because uh, evaluating operator in semi-classical case is just evaluating the, uh, so, so this, this can be calculated in terms of the metric in the bulk. So, so, so you, you can certainly uh, consider, the, uh, consider that there is an operator uh, whose expectation value gives you area. So, so that means that, okay, so for simplicity, let's also divide by 4G Newton. So that means that the S of rho A can be evaluated as trace of A hat rho A plus S of rho A. So namely that the left hand side is given by boundary CFT density matrix, and the right hand side is given by the bulk formula like that. So this is an operator in the bulk Hilbert space because you are evaluating it. So because in the bulk you have a, a geometry and the fluctuation around it. And then you, small a, because this is specifying the bulk quantum state which, for which you, oh yeah, yeah, so, so, so I, should have, I should have written like that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, this, this, this holds only for code subspace, that's important. So now let's apply the first law of entanglement for this formula. So if I apply first law, uh, if I apply the first law, what's going to happen? Well, uh, first law states that zero is equal to S of rho plus del rho rho. And uh, uh, let me see. Yes, but, uh, but S, is, uh, S is this quantity. S is this quantity. So, so that means that uh, this is equal to trace of H of rho del rho minus del of S rho. Right? But now we know what rho, uh, uh, S is. S is this one. So that means that if I calculate del of S rho A, this is equal to trace of A hat del rho A uh, plus uh, plus uh, trace of H of rho A del rho A. Because uh, we can use this, so, so, so this inequality, this equality, this equality means that the delta of S rho is given by trace of H rho, delta rho. And this is true for any density matrix. So in particular, if I, if I apply this over here, here you have S of rho A, but that, according to the first law of entanglement, should be given by trace of H rho del rho. Okay? On the other hand, this is equal, according to this formula, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, equal to trace of uh, HA delta rho A. So, so this is interesting because uh, this means that uh, uh, you can actually compare this with this, and this should hold for any variation. So that means that operatorially, there must be a relation between this operator and this operator. So actually, I'm going into zero minutes, so but uh, uh, I, I guess I started a little bit too late. Maybe five more minutes? Yeah. OK. So I'll, come to, I'll try to come to logical conclusion in five minutes. So, so this means that uh, if, I, if I consider projection of modular Hamiltonian, for the code subspace, note that this is acting on the conformal Hilbert Hil 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 space. So if you consider projection of this to the code subspace, then this is given by A hat plus 
the modular Hamiltonian for, for this region A. So there is, a, there is, there is a such a relation that you can derive. Okay? So this is actually a, a, a very important relation because you can, now that you know the relation between modular Hamiltonian, you can plug that back into relative entropy and uh, derive the following inequality. So uh, this is algebra. You can just do some algebra to prove it. And let me just uh, state the final expression after going through the algebra. So if I use this relation, and uh, so remember, by remembering that the relative entropy is given by expectation value of modular Hamiltonian and entropy itself, uh, you can derive the formula that relative entropy between entanglement density matrix on the boundary is given by relative entropy of the corresponding uh, density matrix in the bulk. So what is this telling me? What this is telling me uh, the, is the following. So suppose you have uh, uh, two states, rho and sigma. So these, both, both of these belongs to the code subspace. So these are both some state in the code subspace. And then you consider uh, region A and region A. And then you consider Ryu Takayanagi surface. And then you can consider domain A. What this is telling you is that uh, if you consider density matrix rho of A and sigma of A and rho of A and sigma of A in the bulk, then these two are the same if and only if these two are the same, and vice versa. So namely that whatever the change that occur over here, you can detect on the boundary. And similarly, whatever the change you make on the boundary, you can detect in the bulk. So that means that, for example, if you excite this thing, small, infinitesimally by applying some local operator on this side, that can be detected by the boundary. So that means that you can actually simulate that effect by doing some operation on the boundary. This is actually the basic idea of reconstruction. And in fact, uh, it was proven uh, in the uh, very nice paper by Shi Dong and Daniel Haro and uh, Aaron Wall that uh, this uh, equality is uh, equivalent this, from this, you can prove that uh, for any operator in code subspace, acting on the code subspace, uh, there is some operator uh, on the CFT side, such that uh, for any state in the code subspace, uh, you can reconstruct. So namely, that operator acting on this code subspace can be reconstructed by the operator acting on the boundary. So, so this gives you sort of a priori construction uh, of why uh, local excitation in the uh, entanglement domain can be reconstructed from conformal field theory operator on the boundary. So this may be a good place to stop. So thank you very much for your attention.